Right, first of all, we're going to need some stingray. Today I caught a beauty on the beach. It took me an hour to get in, and I'll bring you that catch and cook a bit later on. It was a hell of a battle, actually, but that's a video for another day. But live, I want to show you how to cook stingray because it's something that a lot of people in New Zealand don't eat. So we'll get it out of the fridge. Let's hear into it. Stingray's got cartilage in it, not like bone. So you, you basically take the wings off, and the wings are pretty much cartilage right through the middle. So you're taking your knife below and above the cartilage, because you don't want to eat that, and you're then taking the skin off it, and what you end up with is this meat, which looks just like this. I'll show you right now. So we're going to take enough out for my tin. I've already cooked somebody up a feed tonight. G'day, mate. Welcome to the live feed. Uh, this is um, how it looks. It's an interesting flesh. And for me, I've already had some sashimi snapper tonight. So I'm probably just going to have oh, two bits, three bits like this. And I'll show you how I cut it because cutting it's important. Just like anything with fish and with meat, how you cut it has a big play on how the flavour is. Yeah, Kips is not bad, eh, mate? Except it's got a big fucking crack in the bench here that uh, it's going to be fixed up. Didn't quite work out that. Uh, chimera, or whatever it's called, uh, didn't cut the mustard. Oop, I'm leaking a bit there. Should be right. It's a bloody big fridge, isn't it? So, when you cut it, just like a lot of meats, you're cutting across the grain. I don't know if you can see down here from, from there around the corner. I don't really want to keep shifting the camera in. Oh, fuck it, I'll shift it over here so you can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, it's not very educational, is it? Just come down here. You can see that there. So, there's a, a bit of. Uh, let me just tilt that forward for you. There's our bit of meat. Before we start cho chopping it up though, what I'm gonna do is just put a bit of uh, this on it. Cause you want it as dry as possible. Just gonna dry that out. Get my dill plant out of the way. Excuse the uh, bloody bits of dirt under my fingernails. I was just, just cleaning a bit of wasabi, which we're gonna have with us later. And I managed to, I thought I was all tickety-boo, but out in the garden. Right, not particularly flash there, Clay. Fucking big dirty fingernails all over the screen, everybody watching them. Look at this dirty bastard. I did actually clean them, but uh, I went out in the garden and I picked a bit more wasabi. Right, there we go, she's uh, a bit better now. I'm going to get a knife and I'm going to cut that just like this here. That makes it a lot more tender when you're cooking it. Now, I rate this fish. A lot of people don't, but I rate it. I think it's every bit as good as rig to eat. It's probably a bit small. Get across there, like so. And there's our bits. And once we've cut them, again, we're going to just uh, dry them off once more, like this. What boat do I want to get? Well, I can't afford much, mate, but be uh, ideally something with a maybe centre console. Or one also that I could land a drone on. So uh, there we go. There's our, that's our wasabi. <laughs> wasabi. There's our stingray. I want to get the wasabi and show you what it looks like. In the fridge, nice and cold, looking after it. Well, first of all, the leaf. Here's the leaf here. That's your wasabi leaf. And the root of it is somewhere hiding in your fridge. Oh, yeah. Can't find it. Bug it off. Doesn't matter. I'm going to use this anyway. This is just as good. So, next bit is uh, I've got an egg I've, I've done, but I'm going to smack another one in here. Fresh out of my chicken house. Create a nice egg wash. Just beat that up. Get the stingray out of the way. Out of the glass house. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice chili. And these are sort of like a hot little chili. Just gonna do them nice and small. I've just had some snapper from Adventure Dan uh, with wasabi. That was my entree. It was absolutely delicious. Rightio. 
So on the pan here, I've got some beef dripping, which I'm just going to turn on now, get that heated. I'll bring the camera back so you can see what's going on. Yeah, picture should be a bit better at the old farmhouse. Hey, are you guys just joining us? You're welcome. I'm cooking up a stingray tonight for my dinner. Thought I'd just show you guys the process because it's, it's not a fish that everybody has a lot of. <laughs> Get a three meter flame. So we're going to uh, tear it straight away once this, is, this fat's hot enough. I've already cooked some up tonight and this for someone else. Pop that over there. And uh, I can tell you that it tastes bloody good. Right, so in our flour, what I'm going to do is, before I start doing this, I'm going to use this here. It's a powder. It's a, curry, uh, sorry, not a curry powder, a garlic powder. It's bloody good. I used the wings, mate. I caught a big stingray today, and I'll bring you that kitchen cook later on. Uh, it took me an hour to get it in off the beach. I was using a 20-pound breaking strain, and it was quite a big stingray. And I met this bloke at the beach called Blair from Taranaki, and I said, hey, bro, can you hold on to my rod? Because I need something to get this. Well, so I went to my boat to get a gaff, and I didn't have a gaff in there. All I had was a big spear, so I speared it. And man, did it try and sting me. It didn't like being speared at all. And eventually I got my knife in its head, and I cut the sting off with my knife because I didn't want to get smashed by that. I actually stood on a stingray today when I put the crab pot out. I caught some crabs today for uh, rig bait. So there's our uh, garlic, and we're going to smack a bit of salt on top of that. Just like this. Bit more, plenty of salt, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this pepper over the top like that now. Rough as guts, mate, but it will taste bloody good. This will be a really good chomping and chewing. It's going to be a short video tonight. I'm just going to cook this up, chomp out on it, and then uh, wish you guys a great uh, Saturday night. So this is uh, our beef dripping, and the way you, you test your pan is you just take a little pinch of flour like that, and you stick it in your pan like this. And that's not hot enough yet. You want to really, it's, it's sort of going, but you want to really to sort of work up. So we'll bring the heat up a bit more. And probably needs about another two minutes. So she should be good. You got fish today, well done, mate. Lucas got fish today. Lucas has just joined us, he's nine years old. I thought you were going hunting today, Lucas. Did you go hunting and fishing today, did you, bro? Yep. Yeah, shout out, bro. I haven't got the glasses, so I can't see the comments. Let's see what's going on here. Grasshopper. Shout out to Grasshopper. Yeah, mate. And uh, Lucas, you went fishing today, bro. You, did you go fishing or hunting? Welcome along, Dan. And welcome along, Andreas. Yeah, there are squid, mate. There's squid over at Cable Bay. You dive for them, and they're, they're good chomping. Some people call them calamari. Stingray will kill you. Uh, this day, the one I caught today definitely wanted to kill me. It's fucking sting was going everywhere. It's funny as hell. Okay, I reckon this is getting right. Just test it again. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Just starting to come up now. So it's bloody good. Uh, what I need to do is I need to prepare a plate to put it on. So we'll grab a plate because it's only going to be very short in the pan. You'll see how quick it is. And we want a bit of this uh, stuff to soak up the fat. So we're cooking in beef lard. If you guys are just joining me, I've just shown how to cut the stingray up. The good thing about these live streams is you can back up and you can see what happened. So hair cut is quite important. I've got my egg wash. I've put my garlic, my salt onto my stingray. And it's actually good to start cooking. So we want to have it sort of methodically. So we do the first bit, which is dip. And then we go into the, into the pan. So egg wash flour into the pan and onto the plate. The plate's here. And one piece at a time. And what you're going to do is you've got to remember which piece you put in first. So that goes in there. Straight over there like that. Turn it. And smash it in the pan. Deep in first. I've got towards myself that way I know that's the first one that went in. Also the size matters a bit. Oh, I fucked that one up. I went backwards. <laughs> I was busy talking and not concentrating. Around the wrong way. I'm not going to do any harm. Okay, when you put that one in, then you turn this one over. Like so. Now, egg wash first. Smash it into the flour with our little bit of chilli. And that's the third one. And then turn the second one over. That way, you ensure that everything's good. And this guy here, quite a big piece, I'm going to leave a bit longer. And the egg wash again. And we get a sort of a, a bit of a method going here. One of the biggest mistakes that people make with fish is they overcook it. 
and into the pan. And now you're going to bring it all down to the deep end and basically deep fry it. And not for very long. And it smells great. You can smell that garlic really cooking. Really good. Can't really read your comments while I'm uh, cooking, guys, but I will read them all later on. That first one, it's done. That's all we need. Second one will be done after I do this one. Like I said before, doing a fish like this, you've got to be real quick. There's two small ones, they'll be like little nuggets. Beautiful. This is a really nice fish. And probably again another fish, a bit like kawai that gets a bad rap. There's nothing wrong with stingray. Doesn't taste ammonia. Turn that one over and that one's done. So we're kind of keeping a record of where we're at with this. Get it. Put another one in. I've had stingray in a restaurant and I've never ever, it was in Europe and I paid a lot for it and I've never ever cooked it. Today was the first day I cooked it, I cooked some earlier on and I was blown away with it. I was absolutely blown away. I couldn't believe how, how good it was. I thought it was every bit as good as a piece of rig or even possibly better. It's just bloody good. I don't know how many of you have cooked stingray but it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's really good. They're going to bring us down the deep end again just to give that bit of real... It smells a bit like fish and chips cooking here. And that bit there is done now. So I'm just using corn flour, not normal flour. So it's gluten free. There's, there's a piece there. It's not a keto meal and I'm into the keto diet. And occasionally I live dangerously and I go, fuck it, I'll have some carbohydrates. I'm going to do this lot all at once. And uh, put my, because these are tiny little bits. These guys are just about ready to. Oh, put a fat fire in the kitchen. Get that one's done. For the flour. So, a bit of separation there, at least joining up. We don't want that. We want to keep it separated to increase the heat in there. If you have stuff too close together, you just don't get that heat on. You want it hot and fast, basically. But it smells really good, that garlic's just going off. And uh, gonna give this a clean for a minute. You get a you get a build up on your tongs, so just give that a clean off. The clean as you go along, it just still works out better in the final process. I say a good chef cleans as he goes along, and I sort of agree with that. That's about done. Into the flour, that's the last one there. Get rid of our egg. Get a good work over. Oh, she smells absolutely magic. I'm getting a bit of smoke in here. Look that out. I can't run the fan because she's just a wee bit too noisy to do a live stream with the fan going. So we're going to get a bit smoky in here. She's hot in the kitchen. Those ones are good. Bring those down. You can see how quickly I'm leaving in the pan. Not very long at all. Just giving it a real fast work over. And turn these guys over. Very, very dangerous with this much heat with your fat, you be so careful. Because you can really, really, you can burn yourself. It's no fun. I'm going to turn the pan off now and cook these last ones just from the heat that's in the pan. Turn this guy over. We are just about done, boys and girls. It's that quick. It's that quick. Let that there wash over. Bit of chilli on that. She smells fantastic. This is good chomping and chewing, really. Really good. There's my chili on top. A bit more. These guys are done. So the pan's turned off. It's just the heat of the pan. This is one of those scan pans, and Arb told me I should buy this. They are expensive. It was 270 bucks, but apparently if you look after it, they'll last you a lifetime. They're titanium. And so far I've done all my cooking on this. Just going to let that sit there. Put the pan out of the kitchen so it's not smoking the place out. Right, eh? Gonna get a... That's still very hot, so gotta be careful. Safety first, yeah, in the kitchen. If you just joined us, I've just cooked stingray. And uh, this is a, a dish that really, um, I think it, it doesn't get enough sort of credit. 
Is it diabetes friendly, mate? Are you, are you diabetes type 1 or diabetes type 2, Mark? If you're diabetes type 2, I'd say no. I don't know about diabetes type 1 because you'll be on insulin. But if you're diabetes type 2, I would say not with the corn flour because it might, it might stuff with your sugar. I don't know. You'd have to ask your doctor. I wouldn't like to make a comment on that. I'm thinking there's a certain amount of sugar, uh, sugar when the carbohydrate breaks down, but it's bugger all. Um, it's, this is not a keto dish. Righto. We can take this off. And we're just gonna allow it to go on the plate. If it's a plate, a wipe. So we get a nice presentation. You get a bit messy there, Clay. Lucky for me, guys, you can't see what I've just spilt down here. I've got the camera in the right place. <laughs> I'm just going to give the plate a wipe so the plate's nice and hot because it's had that on it. And you always want to serve up on a hot plate. So if you don't have a hot plate, make it hot before you serve up. Shit, this looks good. Okay, before I show you, we're going to garnish with wasabi leaves. The wasabi leaf, you can eat every part of this. You can eat stalk. Obviously, the, the root is the part that you pay big money for. So I'm going to use uh, three. Like that, a very expensive plant to buy. The actual plant sells for two hundred and fifty dollars per kilogram. Do the math on that. It's taken me three years to grow this wasabi, so I'm just going to take those off because they're not so clean, and cut this like that. Get it that big. So that's it. Our stalk. I'm going to sprinkle that on there. There's our fish now. And we've got some wasabi stalk. And the leaf, what we're going to do with the leaf we're going to actually roll the leaf up like this. Got three leaves there. Absolutely beautiful. And we're going to roll it this way. And just cut it. Perfect. I'm going to stick that there in the corner. We want to have a little bit of lemon. You want to say a little bit, just a little bit. That looks like a bloody orange. It is an orange. Look, I'm going to put that on there. Mm. Delicious, but that is not a lemon. That's okay. We want some. Olive oil, which I've got up in here. And I've also been just sent some olive oil. So this is just for the wasabi. Just a little bit of that just to get over there. And now, boys and girls, it's time to, to tear into it, to eat. I think I'm probably going to need salt, but I'm just going to do the, the taste test first. That's what it looks like. That is stingray. It's good. Doesn't need salt. I've got it right. The thing about salt is you can't take it away. Yeah, mate. Yeah, <laughs> the lemons are normally yellow, not orange. Yeah, I'm a blind bastard. Mmm. That tastes great. Shit, that's good. I might add a fraction of salt, just a wee tiny pinch. Man, that's that's next level. So uh, I'm having my dinner with you guys tonight, and you're very welcome. I wish I could bring a few of you good bastards into the kitchen, and you could uh, join me here because she'd uh, be nice to have you. So I caught this today surf casting off Ruby Bay. I was actually targeting rig, and I put a crab pot out. It was funny actually, this bloke came up to me and says, oh, you haven't been watching your crab pot, and it's high and dry, that's illegal. I said, mate. I've, I got here just as the water left and I've been watching it all day. I'm sitting on the beach watching it and he got all upset. He, fuck, he was a Karen. And I said to him, you're just a shit stirrer, man. And I said, some people mentioned watching me with binoculars the whole time and charging down the beach to tell me off. And I was there plenty of time. The crabs were still in the water when I got down there. So anyway, I won't go on about him. He pissed me off, though. He was really over the top. Um, I'm going to eat up here because he's a bit more comfortable. This is a, a dish that, give it a go, and you'll... You'll love it. You'll bloody love it. Guaranteed. You'll uh, go, shit, why haven't I eaten Stingray before?
wasabi leaf and wasabi stalk is very refreshing packed with antioxidants and tastes great with fish well we've got a piece of chili there it sort of looks like uh, what you get the fish and chip shop no I didn't get any rig uh, bro I just caught um, spoon rake so that's what I'm eating and I've got to say that this is actually to me tastes better than rig and I love rig did it give me a sting? No, but it tried to, uh, Ryan. You'll see that when you see the video. I'll bring it out maybe in a week or two. Um, I'll put that video on my Patreon soon, but it'll come out public later on. Yes, it tried to sting me. One of the things I did after I'd stuck it in the head was I cut its sting off because they can actually sting you when they've still been injured. So Lucas is going fishing at 3 a.m. tomorrow. Lucas, you don't need to get up that early at this time of year, mate. There's fish any time of the down at the end of the boat, but it's a good time to be out there because the wind will be down. Mm. Anyway, team, I'm going to cheer into this, and uh, thanks for joining us. I'm just doing these random, these random uh, sort of live ones. You like, yeah, yeah, rig is nice, mate, yeah. Rig's a good fish. Today I caught a whole lot of live cr crabs. G'day, Colin. Enjoy the bears, mate. This is a this is a real treat. You can see how if you look at the flesh, how it's hardly cooked at all, like it's almost just on the edge. G'day, Liam. Welcome to the live feed, mate. Have you had a deep fried jandal? Uh, I can say some of the steaks that uh, me mate used to cook just to taste like deep fried jandal. That's for sure. Needs a little more salt. Just a little. Oh, she's good tucker. Really good chomping and chewing. How many of you guys have had Stingray out there? Just out of interest. Many of you guys watching this right now have had it. A hot sauce. You're right. A hot sauce would be nice, mate. But the wasabi does that. This is pretty hot. Yeah, I cut the wings off and left the rest. I probably won't play a song after dinner, Liam, because after eating it's hard to sing. Good bit backwards. Yeah, Mark says caught them but never eaten. Well, to be honest, Mark, I always try to get the bastards off the line and get them back in the water because they're, they're dangerous. No, it wasn't an eagle ray, it was a stingray, Ricky. Uh, it was a short tail stingray, no, so a long tail stingray, it had three barbs on it. Yep. So yeah, you've had him. You've had him, Mark. Yeah, uh, I was playing a, a show. Yeah, they ate them in Japan. They actually sashimi them in Japan. Good to have you along too, Jeremy. Um, Japan, they, they ate them raw. I tried a wee bit tonight, and I don't rate it raw. It's all right, but I'd rather eat it like this. This is really nice. Next time I catch a stingray, I'll be sticking a knife in it and taking it home. G'day, uh, Alec. Welcome along, mate. I'll show you how to fill it, uh, bud. What you've got is you've got a cartilage that runs right through the wing. So you've got to first of all take your top side and then your bottom side off the cartilage. And then you take the skin off that. And then you're cutting it up. Good on you, Dan, for the encouragement for Lucas. Excellent, mate. Thanks for that. Carla was fantastic, buddy. I sashimi that uh, for that earlier on. Mm. Keen to see a fillet video. Yep, yeah, I'll get you. A, I'll show you the filleting one. It's um, pretty rough because it's the first time I've actually filleted one. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I'll show you that there. Uh, I don't think I was flash, but we got it off and uh, we sort of hacked it to bits and ended up with some good, good tucker. And it really is nice. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Mm. 
I put my glasses on so I can actually read your comments, guys, and I'll bring you a bit closer. It's a bit rude, sort of eating and uh, talking at the same time, but the coffee machine is a uh, oh, it's a DeLonghi. It first of all ran like a bucket of hairy assholes when I got it, but it actually came right. Yeah. Thanks, Robert. You have been lucky to manifest some good stuff in my life. I've also manifest some fucking terrible stuff too. <laughs> but my next hunt will be when um, the weather's cool, but it's just too hot for hunting right now. Well, uh, Smash, um, I can't answer that question for you, sorry, Liam. Keto is terrible for diabetes, bad for really anyone that makes your body eat itself. <laughs> That's interesting. So the keto diet is actually, this actually isn't keto by the way, because I've got flour on it, but I'm just breaking out. The keto diet's actually basically you just, um, uh, when you say eating body eats itself, well, there's actually a little bit of a little bit of uh, truth in that. When you're fasting, your body eats itself. But what it eats is it eats all the bad shit. It cleans you up. You go into what's known as a state of autophagy, and it cleans you out. So it does eat, but it eats all the bad shit. And if you've somebody's had cancer like me, then have I ever used heroin? Yeah, man, I've used heroin. It may be puke. I didn't even enjoy it that much. Um, going back to what I was saying though, uh, the keto diet is one thing, but fasting is another. And they are sort of often combined with intermittent fasting. So if you're someone who's had cancer, fasting's a great idea because you go to a state of autophagy and your body eats up all the rogue cells, all the bad stuff. But the keto diet is something we naturally used to be on quite a bit. Oh, you're type, type one. Yeah. Well, if you're type one, uh, then that's something you need to talk to your doctor about because that's some, type one diabetes is something you're born with. Type two is what people get when they eat a lot of shit food like carbohydrates, that are refined and sugar, obviously. Anyway, I'm not here to preach diet, I'm here just to cook a stingray. Have I come face to face with a great white shark? Not really, but I got towed around, if you saw my video, I got towed around by a big fucking shark when I was fishing in the Chatham Islands uh, two years ago, and it could have easily been a great white shark. So, yeah. Um, I, I love Kina. Absolutely, yeah. Kinners and power, bro, absolutely. Um, yeah, Bruno's resting is what I'll say about that. You're having dinner while driving. So you, you, Johnny wants to start keto, but doesn't want to lose too much weight. Well, I'm as skinny as a gum digger's dog, obviously. I only eat one meal a day. And I've just gone out of keto to eat some things like yams and kumara. And also I'm enjoying some batter on my fish. So every three months I'll drop out of keto for just a few days. And then I'll get back into it. So if you don't want to lose weight, all you've got to do is increase your fat content that you take. And that means more avocado, more fish like salmon, lots of nuts. These actually, uh, these aren't sunglasses, Ron. These are my glasses so I can see because I'm a blind cat. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, you, you really want to... If, you, if you're low on weight, you really want to uh, pump up the fats, have a lot of cream. Do you think a clean diet can... Yes, absolutely with mental health. If you've got mental health issues, the keto diet is probably one of the best diets to be on. I've got over... I've got 113 men that I'm helping right now, and quite a few of them have suffered anxiety or depression or some sort of trauma, and it's really helped a lot. Have you thought about the meat diet? Yes, I have, Gavin. Absolutely, I've thought about it. That's a good diet. Uh, CB oil for the old boy. Have you ever been to the beautiful lake by Carolina? No, but I've watched it plenty of times on my mate Tony's channel. Eating well and exercise does wonders for mental health. Absolutely, Rob. I'm, I'm right on the same page with that. So, good diet, good mindset, good exercise, and good sleep. Is your wasabi in the bed bouncing back slowly, but not as good as I'd like, mate. Not as good as I'd like. This wasabi here is, is from my, the stuff I've, I've grown, and um, it's fucking good. And you can eat it just like that. And of course, you can eat this. And it's delicious. This actually tastes sweet. 
Bye, you, Johnny. See you later, mate. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Mm. Stingray. It looks a little bit something you get at the fish and chip shop. Binsky asks, what boat do I want? Well, what I want and what I can afford are two different things. I mean, every man wants a hard top that's about six metres or something, but can't afford that. I've got to have something that's got a flat bottom. Because I go out at low tide. Hey, Brittany, and a shout out to your husband. Sorry, I didn't get his name there. I've lost that. We'll go back. Oh, to Thomas. Hey, Thomas, if you're watching, mate. Yeah, big shout out. And thanks for joining us too, Brittany and Thomas. But I'll just pan down the comments a little bit. Sorry about the finger on the screen, but... Um, geez, I'm miles... Oh, Haynes Hunter. Well, yeah, they're a good boat. Yeah, I cooked in the pan. You can go back and uh, check it out. Yeah, man, pose okay, Lucas. Pose fine. Mmm. Freshly cooked stingray. I haven't done any white baiting, Ray. I'm too impatient, mate. I've got a place where they are, but... Good bastard by the name of Glenn dropped me off some recently. Fuck, it was good. And the, the, the house come along good, eh? I'm sort of, uh, oh, where are we? Ryan's dad here. You're the man, keep it real. Thanks, thanks Ryan's dad. <laughs> Born too loose, behave yourself, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, all the lady die jokes still after all these years, eh? <laughs> well, it's Saturday night. My Saturday night's been, I've been fishing all day. And I've uh, <laughs> been fishing off the beach surf casting. It's been awesome. But there were a couple of wankers down there. One took fish out of my crab pot without asking me. And the other guy came and drilled me because he said that I wasn't watching my net when I was, so... People are very stressed out right now, I think. People are very anxious. There's a lot of low-level anxiety going on. I should grow potatoes. Potatoes aren't on the menu when you're on a keto diet, bro. Um, I've come in late. Looks like I've already eaten. Yes, stingray's good. Hey, mate, you can always go back later when it's finished and um, watch watch the... Uh, sorry. You can always... The good thing about these live feeds is they stay on there and um, you can always come back in later. Good to have you on board anyway, Brad. Ah, oh, Flash Moore's here too. Go, Mark. Yeah, big trout are up in the... Uh, G'day, Benny. Big trout are up in the up there. I want to get up there, mate. Well, that's true, Benny. People are a bit bloody... They get up tight and they try and take it out. See a bloke just trying to catch a feed and have to stick their nose in it. And this guy, was, he was taking the bloody fish out of my... Um, I was wrestling this sting around the beach and I couldn't get to my crab pot and the tide was going out. And he comes up and starts taking, and had a few fish in it, a few yellow eyed mullet. And he was like, putting them back in the sea. You can't leave them stranded there, and the water's washing over them. I can't really sing Ryan um, when I've uh, got a belly full of tucker, mate. It's hard to sing when you, your food comes up, and I want to enjoy it. I just want to show you guys how to cook stingray. A good um, vegetable to start your garden with, mate, and I'm not a gardener's asshole, but a good. Uh, Vegetables, lettuce, they grow so easy and they grow so fast. You can have lettuce like in, I don't know, four weeks, three or four weeks. Probably fastest growing. Spring onions are always good. Have you found a video editor clay? Gotta say your editing skills are great. I don't think my editing skills are that good, but thank you. Oh, I use uh, Premiere. Mmm. The watercress all died. Yeah, the kitchen does look flash, but uh, it's not that flash. There's a big fucking crack in the sink kit down here. I'll show you. I think ITM are going to fix it or replace it, but I was a bit disappointed. I'll just bring this down here. Um, don't know if you can see it's cracked in the corner. See that? There's a big crack coming out there. Another one there. There's a bit of a clean because I've just been cooking, but uh, that's, um, it's not flash. Bit disappointed about that actually. Anyway, don't even fuck it. To be honest, guys, I'm I'm just happy. It's happy cooking outside with an outdoor fire. To be honest, 
that's actually no more gaps and it's a bloody brand new kitchen shouldn't be cracking after like two months i'm going to put the jug on does anybody want a cup of tea yeah, it's a serious crack in it anyone want a cup of tea i'm going to have one nobody okay i'll have one by myself then Yeah, it's under warranty, flash more. They're going to they're gonna sort it, mate. It's just a bit of a disappointment, that's all. Didn't really expect it to fall to bits. Too late for a coffee. You want a beer, mate? <coughs> that's pretty flash. Got a wee light under there, too. How cool is that? Well, I've nearly finished this tucker. I'm onto the last bit of fish. True, you'll take a beer. Well, it's Saturday night. That's the very last bit of Stingray. You gave up alcohol 16 months ago. Well done, Mark. These days I only have a drink if I catch a good ball or a decent fish. Mmm. Alright, that was good. That was good. Oh, I'm not going to play the guitar tonight, Ryan, but I will do it another one, mate. Yeah, I'm a whiskey drinker, mate. Mm. Yeah, I don't really want to drink on a live feed because it kind of promotes getting on the piss, and uh, I've got a lot of mates that are alcoholics, so they're kind of like, I try to support them. <laughs> I thought it was a fucking lemon, it's a bloody orange. Mm. I'm going to make my favourite dessert. I'm going to make a very, very basic dessert tonight. This here is nuts. Right. That's pecan nuts. These are the nuts, all the nuts you can have on a keto diet. So, pecan nuts. I won't be using Brazil nuts because they taste like ass. Uh, we've got some... What are those ones called? Someone's give me uh, almonds, sorry, yeah. Is that right? These come from Hawaii, macadamia nuts, walnuts, good for the brain, and I've always eaten pecan nuts. So pecan nuts and walnut nuts, they're prebiotic, so they're really good for your gut. So you need a probiotic and a prebiotic. Am I doing Mo no Movember? Well, I suppose I'm always doing Movember, but no, mate, I'm not. Um, I probably should, or could. Uh, let's go back. Here to see um, an Aussie First Nation taught you how to stew stingray back in the 80s. Oh, fuck off. Sorry, man, the feed's gone too fast. Yeah, I want to get the young lads back for a live feed. Just getting them when I'm out in the boat and everything works. G'day, Brody. Welcome in, mate. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a whip up a dessert. Well, I want to buy a bloody dessert bowl. Right behind me here. It's not really a dessert bowl, it's actually, it's actually a big cup that you can make dessert out of. So, what we're going to do is, this is a really good keto dessert. And it's, it's packed with all the good shit and it tastes delicious. So, if you're on a keto diet, this is a really good one. So, write this down if you remember it. So, I'm going to put it in a cup. I'm not going to put a lot of nuts in, some walnuts. Okay, I'm going to smash in some pecan nuts. Pecan nuts are great. Try to keep them in the cup. So pecan nuts, one of my favourites, these guys here. They're expensive, but to my thinking, if you once a day, you best eat really good tucker rather than eat shit throughout the day. So there's my macadamia nuts. They go in there. And I want some pine nuts. Oh, don't tell me out of pine nuts. Hold that thought for me, I need pine nuts. Don't tell me out of pine nuts. Oh, here we go. Sweet ass, bro. I got some pine nuts here. Pine nuts, they're really good. Gonna smack them into here. So we've got our mixture. And on top of that, I want some, some coconut. So that's all my nuts, and those are all keto friendly. Put them back in the cupboard. Come back, and I've got this here ground coconut. It smells delicious. Before I was on a keto diet, I used to love those little cakes that have got coconut sprinklings on them. 
Yeah, mate, alcoholism is a great, is a big problem, and uh, it's fucking hard to stop drinking when you're a drinker. Going to mix that up with the fingers. I'm making a, uh, a dessert, mate. So we've got pecan nuts, uh, macadamia nuts, walnuts. What else have we got on there? Pine nuts. I think that's all. And some ground coconut. Okay, we need something to make it go frozen. This is a mixture. So this this is this is not actually what you'd use for kayak. Yeah, I'll go I'll go uh, co uh, kayak fishing again, mate. When my arm comes right, it's got fig jar in it, which is not real keto because it's too sweet. But right now I'm sort of just busting out. Going to smack that straight into the bowl. There's quite a lot of sugar in that, so that much there. Right. Oh fuck it, I'm going to put more on. I've had a big day. In the fridge, freezer at least. Cannot beat New Zealand cream. What makes New Zealand cream so good is that our, our cattle aren't fed on grains, they're fed on fresh green grass, and it makes the best bloody milk and the best cream. Look at this. So, when we put this in here, what it does is it freezes it up like ice cream. And I'm not going to be shy on the cream because part of a keto diet, I'm sort of floating in between two right now, is you have plenty of cream, plenty of fat. It's good. And you mix this up and it goes all lumpy in there, like ice cream. Turn around a few times and you get this really nice, beautiful texture. The nuts and the berry and the cream, that is a meal to die for. The coconut, I'm going to actually sprinkle a little more coconut on that there. Good chomping and chewing. Thanks Hendrik, cheers bro. Uh, well, the reason I do stuff on suicide is because I've lost a lot of people that I love over the years, and whilst I'm probably not qualified to talk about mental health, I do know some of the things that help when uh, you're feeling like shit, and one of the things I say to people is just get out in the bush, go for a walk, even if you're not a hunter, or go fishing, and I'm going to let that mm, cream. Anyway, just do something, change what you're doing, change your mindset. If you, if you go through a hard patch, change everything you're doing because what you've been doing in the past just isn't working. But in the meantime, also do something to get your body going. And uh, when I've gone through hard times, for me, going hunting or going fishing has always been good to get me through it. And guess what? You come out the other end again. And also you come out with a feed. You, you bring something home to eat. That's a good thing. So that's our dessert. We've done our uh, stingray and we're now doing our, our dessert in the big cup. And it's going to be absolutely delicious. It'll be good chomping and chewing. Mm. That's my uh, new chair over there. With the, it's the first time in my life I've had a new chair, and it's my little place for sitting down and, and, and working on the laptop, making videos. So I've got a new space now in the kitchen. How is it? Mmm. It needs strawberries. It needs strawberries. Have a copy of the fridge. I've got some out in the garden, but I can't go out there because I'll, I'll lose reception. Mm. Oh, I'm dribbling. Anyway, it's uh, been a great day. I just wanted to bring that video to you, but I'll bring the video to you in its full form of catching the stingray, filleting it, skinning it, prepping the meat, and cooking it and serving it up to Awi. I've cooked her a feed tonight, very quick one. Play some shape by Ed Sheeran. Bro, I don't play anybody's music but my own. I spent years playing other people's music. That's what I used to do for a living, and I just, uh, these days, only do my own music. Plus, I sound like a, a wounded duck if I sing Ed, Ed Sheeran. He's got such a beautiful voice, and I'm just a filthy pig, I'm so I wouldn't do it justice, to be honest. Mm. Yum. Cold in the teeth.
what I'll do guys in my next uh, video is I will pull out the harmonica thanks bro good on you mate I'll pull out the harmonica and I'll put the guitar and I'll give you guys a few songs um, from just stuff I like to play the harmonica just to talk myself Sea Scots poached in butter and cream yeah that's what they used to actually do with stingray flaps eh Hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna chat down this. Thanks for joining us. I'm gonna sign off now. It's been going for 45 minutes. I was only gonna do 30 minutes, but thank you for joining me and be good. <laughs> Can't be good, be careful. And we'll see you in the next live feed. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join me in the kitchen. And when I get things a bit more sorted, I'll uh, have some more. Oh, you had a beer with your mate Bryce yesterday. Good on you, mate. Hey, don't be pledging money, bro. Thanks for that, but don't do that, please. Hang on to your dollars, mate. Um, that's very kind. Thanks, big ski boy, but don't do that in the future, mate. You spend your money on yourself, your loved ones, and your family. My needs are met by my patrons, but I really appreciate that uh, that you did that, but please don't do that. Hang on to your dough. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. I'm going to work out how to turn this thing off, because uh, last time I left it running for ages, and I think I... Uh, didn't know it was going, and I went to the toilet, and I don't know whether anybody saw that. I hope not. I think I... Managed to edit that off later, which it was embarrassing. I had the camera going. That was about three streams ago, and I was like, still running, and here I'm having a pee <laughs> right in front of the camera. I managed to to online edit it, but uh, the fuck, it was yeah, it could have been. You couldn't see anything, but it was just the fact that it was. You clearly see what I was doing. So the YouTube has this online feature that you can edit online, which is really good. It's great. Although that one there, it somehow cut it off, so I don't know if they did. Anyway, hey, have a good one. Be good, can't be good, be careful, and thanks for joining us on this live stream, and check out, go back through it, and work out how to cook Stingray, and give it a crack, because it's bloody good. It's really good chomping and chewing, really good. Right, I'll see if I can work out how to turn this thing off, because, uh, like I said, last time I didn't, it was going for ages. See you later.